Buenas tardes! Happy Cinco de Mayo, Castorians! I'm Chef Mia, and today we're we'll making carnitas in the air fryer. Subscribe to become a part of the Castori community and hit the bell icon so you never miss another episode. Let's get started! Great, we've got everything ready to go and measured out. For those of you looking for metric measurements, please check the description below and let's get started. All right, we're gonna start out with three pounds of pork butt. Pork butt is just the pork shoulder. Don't really know why it's called pork butt. So what we're going to be looking for is any pure pieces of fat. You don't want your carnitas to be super fatty, so any pure pieces of fat you're gonna trim off. And actually right now, I'm going to be cutting this down to three equal portions. Sometimes you will have to cut it down to four, depending on how tall or thick the pork butt piece is to fit into the dual blaze. And so right now, I'm just going to move that aside. We're gonna trim these fat pieces off. Yeah. You can leave a little bit of fat, which will help get your meat super tender, but pieces like this where it's just mainly fat, you don't really want that because it's gonna create an extra layer of oil and just make your carnitas taste super greasy and not really accentuate the flavors from the orange, the orange zest, garlic and serrano peppers, and the cumin as well. You wanna be able to taste everything, which is what makes carnitas so yummy and what makes it smell so good is all the nice um, spices and herbs we'll be putting in. So what's really cool about the dual blaze is that it mimics the traditional stovetop method of cooking for braising. It's got the top and bottom heating elements that allow the entire pot of the air basket to heat up really nicely, get that juice and the um, seasonings flowing into the pork as if you're braising on a stovetop. Alrighty, so these are ready to go. We're going to get that off to the side and start off with juicing fresh oranges. I'm going to leave one because we need the zest two tablespoons of zest later on. But for fresh orange juice, um, I just think it's a lot easier to control the amount of sugar going into the pork. You don't wanna use like handmade or anything because then it might burn inside the air fryer basket due to the excess sugar. So you're going to need about half a cup of fresh squeezed orange juice. And yes, sometimes it will get messy, so please be careful. So, so nice. And I was actually really surprised the first time I ever made carnitas. I wasn't aware that traditional carnitas was made with orange or citrus at all. And I did a few test runs where I used some without the orange and it just wasn't the same. So that orange really gives it that nice sweetness that's in the back of the palate once it's done cooking and it allows the meat itself to caramelize a little bit. And so when you're eating street tacos with carnitas, that little crispy bit on the top of the tacos from the meat is definitely because of the sugar caramelizing in the pan. Just really nice. And half a cup of fresh squeezed orange juice is about two large navel oranges. You can get them at the grocery store or the farmer's market. Make sure they're ripe so then they get the nice sweetness of it rather than a tart orange. Great, so we've got that cleaned out of the way. We're actually going to be seasoning directly into the basket first. What's great about the dual blades is you don't need to preheat because it has that top and bottom heating. So what I did is just I took out the crisper plate because you won't be needing it for this recipe. And what we're going to do first is I got a separate bowl just so it's easier to get the seasoning evenly distributed. We're going to be using two teaspoons of ground black pepper, two teaspoons of kosher salt, and you want a little bit more later for tasting as well. We're going to be using one teaspoon of ground cumin, and also one and a half teaspoons of dry oregano leaves. Just gonna mix that together really quick. It's gonna act as a dry rub for the pork butt. You don't need any extra oil because the pork itself will release a lot of liquid and oil from its natural fattiness and the marbling within the meat. So I'm just gonna take it and evenly place it into the basket right now. Perfect. And then I'm just going to be very generous and liberal and make sure all the seasoning is being done for the pork. You get it everywhere. And then we're going to be adding in the liquid as well as the herbs for this recipe. I like to just pick it up and like make sure all the pork is coated 
with the seasoning, especially the sides that aren't super marbled with fat or anything like that. And this way you can make sure the pork is evenly seasoned with all that yummy delicious spice and herbs and it just smells so good. Something about cumin and oregano, they're like blend is very harmonious. It smells very good in here and it makes me very hungry and I can't wait for you guys to see what it looks like because it's it's quite incredible how tender it gets and you can do not just carnitas in here, you could do like pulled pork and things like that and it just gets really tender, really juicy. It's about, I want to say like 30% faster than cooking on the traditional oven and stovetop too because for this recipe it's only going to be 45 minutes versus if you were braising on the stove or anything, it'd probably be more about an hour, an hour 20. Okay, so I think it's evenly distributed with the dry rub. Now we're going to just add in one and a half cups of water and half a cup of that fresh squeezed orange juice. Then we have one whole yellow onion um, diced, peeled and diced. It's gonna help give it that extra savory flavor, umami notes, as well as help break down and tenderize the pork. So onions have this enzyme in them that help really break down the sinews and the protein structure of the pork itself, so it's great. Now, we're gonna be using a lot of garlic for this recipe because it's delicious. And we're gonna have, this is about seven garlic cloves minced, or about three tablespoons. Get that in there as well. And then we have serrano chilies, which are delicious. I took one big serrano and just sliced it into long strips that are about a fourth of an inch thick. This helps give that extra little kick for your pork later on, which is great. And last but not least, we have three more things. We have two bay leaves, a candela Mexican cinnamon stick, and of course, two tablespoons of fresh orange zest, which is about the zest of one large navel orange. Mmm, smells so good. It helps freshen everything up, makes it a little bit um, nicer for the acidity of the orange juice and the orange zest to cut through the natural fats of the pork, and it just makes your house smell really good too because of the fresh citrus. Awesome. Just gonna get all of that delicious zest down into the basket and you're just gonna be um, like mixing everything together just with your hand just to make sure that the bay leaf and the cinnamon stick get into the liquid and just that the garlic is evenly distributed and the zest is evenly distributed beautiful great now we have everything ready to go into the air fryer basket and just be careful because it's kind of heavy you can totally do this because it's it's not preheated it's not hot we're gonna go directly into the dual blaze Awesome. Then we'll turn it on and you're going to be dropping that temperature down to 375 and then we'll be cooking it at 45 minutes. And halfway through you're going to want to manually pause the machine because there is no shake function just so you can flip the pork and continue cooking. Here we go. The pork has been cooking for about 25 minutes now so with 20 minutes left about halfway through we're going to pause the air fryer and just carefully remove it. Be careful, it will be hot. And then we're going to be flipping the pork. Flipping the pork just really helps the pork maintain its juicy tenderness once it's done cooking. And please be careful, it is really hot. And we'll just have to flip it once so it continues to cook evenly. And then after it's done cooking, you're gonna wanna let it rest um, and cool until it's like easy to touch because you'll be sh shredding it with forks or your hands with gloves. Perfect. Get it all nice and rotated there. And again, just be careful when putting it back because it is a little heavy. I'll just be going directly back into the air fryer. Okay. Awesome. The carnitas are done. Again, please be careful when you're taking it out of the air fryer. It is a little bit heavy and it will be very hot. So what you want to do now is, since 
it was roasting on the other half for 20 minutes. I just want to flip it again, just so the top that was getting crispy is resubmerged into all that nice, delicious juice with the orange juice, the water, and all those herbs and spices. So we're gonna now let it sit off to the side and cool. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. I think this piece right here is actually ready to go. For the larger pieces, I still suggest letting it cool completely so it's not super hot when you touch it. So we're just gonna take two forks and start shredding it. Look at that, look how tender it is and how easy it starts to shred and tear apart. It's gonna be great. Ooh, oh, it smells so good. And what's great about this recipe is like, this recipe, since you use about three pounds of pork butt, or pork shoulder actually, um, you can feed about four to six people. You can have a big celebration, perfect for Cinco de Mayo. And so, while we get that continued to be shredded up, oh, it smells so good. I choose the smallest piece, but you get the gist. We're gonna shred everything up and get the table like set and ready to go for our fiesta and we'll get right into tasting. Once again, Castorians, it's my favorite part of the day. It's time for tasting. I'm so excited because these are just delicious. They're juicy and tender, savory, a little bit citrusy, and a little bit spicy because of that serrano. So we go right in here. I've garnished it with some chopped onion, cilantro, and some cotija cheese. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. It's so good. What's great about serving it family style is you can have everybody make their own taco with a different toppings that they want, but I just want to point out that traditional Cinco de Mayo food eaten isn't really just tacos. Of course you can have tacos with whatever protein, you have lengua, chicken, carne asada, um, carnitas, or a more traditional dish would be mole poblano. But for our purposes today, I'm so glad I could share with you this air fryer carnita recipe, because once you have everything laid out ready to go, you can build yourself a hearty taco, and I'm so excited because we've got all this delicious carnitas right here. I made some serrano and cilantro Mexican crema. I just blended up some Mexican crema with serrano, serranos, <laughs> cilantros and serranos. I'm gonna make, and I made a little pico just to brighten up the dish as well. And well, cheers. Hmm. What a wonderful tradition to just have your whole day be surrounded by family and friends and delicious food. Thank you so much for watching, Castorians. We hope you have a happy Cinco de Mayo. But once again, before we go, please leave your answers in the comments below because I want to know what your favorite Cinco de Mayo traditions are. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.